Hello everyone, Paul from High Tech Legion. I'm going to do a little bit different today than I normally do when I'm showing you a product. I'm actually going to kind of review it after I show you the product, show you some benchmarks, and I'm going to give you my opinion on the card and etc. So in any case, without further ado, we're going to be taking a look at a new video card from NVIDIA. Okay everyone, so what we have here is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 Ti Boost. It still is a GK106 GPU, but basically what you're looking at is some people might call it crippled, some people might say that it's a hurt card, whatever you want to call it, it's not. Basically what happened is they took the 660, they, they shut down an SMX, they lowered some core, CUDA cores, and now you have a 650 Ti boost. Now, what does the boost mean? The boost means that, other than like unlike the 650 Ti, you're going to get SLI capability. You're also going to get GPU boost on this, which people were complaining about when the 650 Ti came out originally. So you have those two. So now you have SLI and the GPU boost. CUDA cores, 768. The base clock is 980 megahertz. The boost clock on this will boost up to 1033. I've actually got, seen it go up a little bit higher than that in my testing. It's got two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory on it. Now this is important. We have some new and upcoming games or even some games that are out now that require a bigger frame buffer. So if you're using a one gigabyte card, now this is a mainstream card, if you're using a one gigabyte card, you might not be able to use high settings at 19 by 10 resolutions with any AA. You might max out the card on memory. So again, it's two gigabytes of GDDR5, it's 192 bit. The memory speed is six gigabytes. It's got a six pin power connector here. The six pin power connector is the old, a single connector that you need to use to connect this card. It's a PCIe connector. The TDP on the card is 134 watts. That's not that bad. It sips some power. Now that's max TDP. That's not gaming TDP. In our test we saw it hit about 125, but that was really stressing it. If we look at the front of the card and we look at the outputs, we have two DVI ports, we have an HDMI port, I want to show you the correct one here, a display port, so now you can actually use this card and run three monitors just with one single card. Now do I really suggest that you use three monitors a game with the 650 Ti? Probably not, because you're going to have to use fairly low settings. Maybe with SLI you'll be able to. We'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it. We will be doing an SLI review on this. It is PCIe Express 3.0, and it has a rear exhausting fan. So the fan is in the back. So now that's the card itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the benchmarks. And I'll be right back, and I'll give you my opinion on the card. Okay everyone, hope you like those benchmarks, we're back. Now let me talk about the card. As I said, some people might complain because people have been complaining all the time, oh well you know video cards aren't progressing this year or there's been too many just I guess you could say speed bumps etc. Well here's the situation, number one, 
If you, re if you read our written review, right now we're in a tick phase with video cards. I don't expect the top to be coming probably till the beginning of next year. So we are in a tick phase. If you're looking at a tick, this is definitely an upgrade to anything older that you might have, as long as it's a mainstream card. I'm not saying that if you have a 680 to go ahead and buy this. But if you have a mainstream card, an older mainstream card, a 500 series, a 400 series, even a 9000 series, you're going to want to get one of these because the performance is excellent. We have seen a 30% overall performance boost from the 650 Ti. This also is 19 to 20% increase in performance over the AMD HD 7790. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't want to see any comments, oh, well, I'll buy a 7850. Look at it this way, people. I don't care what card it is. The way that I look at it when I review it, I try to be as unbiased as possible. I look at it based on its performance and what it gives me. A 7850 standard has one gigabyte of memory in it. Are you going to be able to play Crisis 3 at high resolutions with one gigabyte of memory? No, you're going to run out. Are you going to be able to pay, play Max Payne 3 at high resolutions with one gigabyte of memory in AA? No, you're going to run out. Look at the review. We've got a picture. It shows you that we have to down clock it with anything that has one gigabyte of memory. We've got new games coming, about, coming out. Assassin's Creed 4. We have uh, Metro 2033, the new installment of that. This is going to require at least two gigabytes of memory on it. Price-wise, this is only $179, but this is the 2 gigabyte edition. Yes, NVIDIA thought of you also, those of you who don't want to spend $169, I'm sorry, if I said $179, I meant $169, but for those of you who do not want to spend and $69, you could get a one gigabyte card, and I don't recommend it because for the $20, this, this, is, this is the killer right now. For the $20 less, you could get the one gigabyte card for $149, and you're basically gonna get the same performance. The only difference is, is when you go to those higher resolutions on these newer games, you're probably gonna run out of memory, so you're gonna have to clock it down. Now, the closest competitor to this card is the 7790 from AMD, which they just released. That is a one gigabyte card. Now, what happened with that card is that they add and they added an extra primitive uh, primitive shader on it. Basically, what the primitive shader is supposed to do is try to compensate. If I'm using the wrong term, primitive primitive. Uh, I, I'm almost sure it's a primitive shader, but in any case they added an extra one on there for primitive to try to take care of the memory buffer it doesn't work as you can see in the written review itself look at the max Payne picture that was actually a picture taken when we had the 7790 in there so even with adding extra primitive re primitive uh shaders it's not taking care of the frame buffer situation so basically You've got a video card here for the mainstream user or a budget mainstream gamer at $169. Yes, other manu uh, this happens to be a reference card, so you're going to have to check to see what you know overclock cards are from, from the OEMs like Gigabyte, EVGA, ASUS, MSI. But they will have reference boards, but if you want to look at the price scheme, 149 for the one gigabyte, 169 for the two gigabytes. This is an editor's choice award at this time based on its performance. Remember one thing, people. If you didn't see it at High Tech Legion, you might not have seen it at all. This is Paul wishing you well. Take it easy. Bye-bye.